I think uh, we can start. Uh, mm -hmm. Recording is already started. Uh, so uh, I, at first I will introduce uh, your dear speakers in Russian uh, and I, after that I repeat in English. Okay? Sure, sure thing. Sure thing. Uh, уважаемые коллеги, очень рад, что вы присоединились. Сегодня у нас замечательный случай встретиться с двумя великолепными докладчиками из компании INT4, Михалом Кравчиком и NXV U. Uh, этот доклад будет про уроки, как вы видите на экране, выученные уроки и опыт миграции uh, интеграционных решений с SAP PO uh, в SAP CPI. И вы можете писать свои вопросы в, по кнопке Q&A, какие-то обсуждения делать в чате, пишите по-русски или по-английски на любом языке. В конце доклада я переведу их по-английски и ответы переведу на русский язык. Ведется видеозапись, будет выложена на YouTube. Пожалуйста, задавайте вопросы, общайтесь. Мне кажется, сегодня великолепный случай поговорить и услышать что-то новое. Uh, dear uh, English uh, colleagues, English speaking colleagues, uh, of course, uh, today uh, we have uh, so-called PIMON uh, 2020 event, uh, and uh, today's uh, session is about SAP PO to SAP CPI immigration lessons learned. Uh, two great uh, integration stars, Michal Kravchik and uh, Ink Sviu from INT4 company, today are speakers. And uh, uh, please uh, put your uh, questions into Q&A uh, uh, and uh, you can um, put uh, some thoughts uh, into chat. Uh, feel free uh, to pu publish your questions and uh, video recording will be available uh, some time, time after the session. So that's great. Uh, let us start. Perfect. So, guys, thank you so much. First of all, for having us at the at the PI Mon, it's a, it's a great honor. We've we've never been to the to the Russian user group uh, session yet. Um, so, as Ilya mentioned today, what we will try to show you, we will try to to show you some sort of um, lessons learned from from our actually first SAP PO to CPI migration project. And now, just just one remark before before we go into the before we. Uh, we we, di we we make a deep dive into the topic so so this project is is as as i mentioned our first uh, first migration project and it's not yet finished it's it's finishing in i think 2 months uh, if i'm not mistaken engsui so engsui is currently leading a team of uh, uh, within within int4 who is doing a project for for one of the customers from us the project is not finished, but we still uh, we, we we started preparing the lessons learned. And since your conference, your user group conference is ha was happening in September, we thought that hey, why not show you uh, the a sneak peek of the of those lessons learned? So probably we don't have everything. We may we may uh, we may miss some of the some of the lessons that because we're we're still continue uh, to get those. As some of you probably heard from Engs, we, we've just discovered another 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 issue just today. Um, but yeah, we I, I bet that we will be able to to show you at least something, some of those some of those lessons. Um, so maybe just a few uh, just a few words about about the company. So within the within the INT4, uh, we, we're a Polish-based company. Uh, based, we're, we're a company based in Poland, but we have people working from us from from all over the world. Um, what we do is we try to share the knowledge as what we're doing right now about the about the SAP integration. And and one of the one of the one of the things how we do that is we 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 write a lot of books. So currently we have ten SAP uh, SAP Press authors uh, write uh, who wrote who wrote nine SAP Press books about all different uh, different flavors of of the SAP integration. So these are things like SAP PO, uh, SAP AEF, BRF Plus, or S4 HANA integration. And so one of one of the recent uh, recent books also has a. Uh, has a Russian touch, I would say to that. Uh, so, so this is the book that Eng Suyel and Vadim Klimov wrote uh, wrote about the CPI, about the groovy in, in SAP CPI. Um, uh, we have we have two SAP mentors. Me myself, I'm more for the SAP PO, and Eng Suyel is more for the for the CPI. So we're, we're usually preparing content about two different two different things. 
uh, we try to we try to um, popularize and 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 do a lot of lectures on different events like SAP tickets or SAP and side tracks, or at least we used to do that before before 2020. And one of the things we also have at INT4 is we uh, we have a tool that allows uh, that allows for automated testing of all of the SAP middleware solutions. So things like SAP CPI or SAP PO are also the backend integration. And it's also it's also used in in, in some of our Russian uh, some of our Russian clients. So, but getting back to the getting back to the topic of the of the PO to to CPI migration. So when we when we discussed with Eng Sui about this uh, about this topic, we found out that there are multiple dimensions of this of this migration, right? So when we're since we're developers, most of the most of the time we're thinking about the development perspective. So for example, what do we need to do? What do we physically need to do in order to move the move the content from SAP PO to SAP CPI? So what are the challenges over there? What are maybe some, some of the restrictions and, and, and things, things similar to that. So the first one is the development perspective. And of course, we will show you the development perspective. But then comes also the, the project management perspective and the, uh, the project management perspective and the operations perspective, right? So this is also uh, something, something really important. And we will also we will also try to uh, try to show you some of those things because um, when we think about about doing a project like CPI like PO to CPI migration, it's unfortunately it's not only the development that we need to do, right? So there's a lot of things we need to do, and one of them is this operational part, which is unfortunately also very very time consuming. So what we will try to do, we will try to show you, uh, show you also, also this part. But let me start with the, with the development perspective because I guess this is one of the, um, one of the most popular. And if we have any, any of, the, of the developers on the call, then I'm pretty sure that it will be, it will be very, very useful for you. So whenever we think about the development perspective, we need to think about, about what we're trying to do, right? So, we're trying to migrate from one SAP middleware, SAP PO, to a non-SAP uh, to, to another SAP middleware, which is the SAP CPI. Right? Even though these are two middleware from, from a single company, right? One, one of them is, is an on-prem middleware, the second one is the is the cloud middleware. SAP does not yet provide any sort of automated migration between those two tools. So what does that mean? That means that there's just a few, a very, very few objects that we can reuse, right? One of them is, for example, the, the, the message mappings. So what we can do is we can, when we're, when we're moving the content from, uh, from SAP PO to SAP, uh, SAP CPI, what we can do is we can reuse the existing message mappings. Of course, there are exceptions to that. So, for example, um, we cannot use, uh, we cannot use the, the parameters. Right, uh, we cannot use uh, we cannot uh, the, the the RFC lookups or any kind of lookups needs to be modeled in a different way, but some somehow we can we can at least say that the that the there are there are parts like the like the mapping that can be reused, but the majority of the flow has to be redone completely from the scratch, right? So we just have to model this this interface from the scratch, so. In, 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 of course, in, in, in terms, if we're talking about, about simple flows, then it shouldn't, be, it shouldn't be a problem, but you still have to do this, uh, this migration manually. So this is, the, this is the consequence, so let's say the, the dark side of the, of the migration. On the bright side of the migration, um, uh, we, we always think about, we always, uh, we always think about uh, BPMs, right? If you have any NetWeaver BPMs, and if you want to move them to the to the i flows, that may actually simplify your flow, right? We know that that Netweaver BPMs are are pretty complex to model and to to develop inside the SAP PO. And and in i flows, the the idea of the BPM is is very common, right? All of the i flows are more or less look like a, look like a BPM. So in this case, the the migration will actually. What, what, what we've noticed is can actually simplify 
simplify the flow and also operations, like because it's not it's not a, a BPM anymore. It's a normal iFlow, so you you do all of the other activities in a very similar way to the to any other um, to any other iFlow. So with with this with this in mind, Engsui, if I can if I can just ask you for the for the for the first for the first part, non-automated migration. Did I just miss anything or? Um, would you like to add something? Uh, that's more or less. Um, but one point about uh, message mapping is if you have any Java UDF there, it's migrated across, but then um, you cannot modify it anymore. So, so it, it still works as is, but then uh, you cannot enhance it further. So, so if you plan to then for future change any logics, then you have to actually rewrite it in a GUI script. So that, that may also be one of the things that you need to plan, right, during this. If you're heavily using the, the UDFs, the user-defined functions, and, and I think that, that I mean, from, from my perspective, I, I've worked with around 30, uh, 30 um, SAP PO customers. Um, they usually have a lot of UDFs, right? So, so if you want to maintain them later on during the migration, this is, this is one, of the, one of the topics that you may need to, uh, you may need to address. Uh, j just just one more thing guys because i didn't mention the the types of the, of of the cpi migrations right so in our case the customer is moving all of the flows from sappo to sap cpi right so that means that they will get rid of 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 the pi of the of the po and they they want to replace all of the flows with the use of cpi but this is not the case for all of the clients, right? So when, when we speak to some of the clients that are preparing for this sort of migration, actually what they want to do is they want to move just parts of the, of the flows to the CPI. Whether this is for the learning purposes or maybe this is how they want to, to remain in the, in the future, just to stay in line with the, with the, SAP, uh, with the SAP guidelines. Because also, also, also for you guys, um, I'm not... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if, if you know the, the, the SAP guidelines on the CPI usage. So right now SAP is saying that we should be using the hybrid approach, right? So SAP is not saying, okay, if you have PI, you should move everything to CPI, right? SAP is saying SAP PO just, just in, in very short, right? You can find, you can find the guidelines for the, for the hybrid approach, but basically SAP is saying if you have an on-prem, or on-prem integration. In most cases, this can stay. Uh, this should stay uh, on the SAP PO because SAP PO with extended support, it will be supported for the next decade, so till 2030. But if you have cloud-to-cloud -cloud connections, then maybe if the, if they are running on the on the SAP PO, then maybe you can move some of those flows to. Uh, to, to the CPI, right? To, to, the, to the cloud middleware. So there are multiple types of migrations. In our case, we're just describing the one that where everything is moved, right? Everything is moved, but, but I guess the customers will also use different approaches for, the, uh, for, those, for those migrations. Um, so the second, the second really, really important aspect is that there is no central repository for, for data types. Right, so if you import the mapping, you can you can use the let's say the, the the data types that that got imported, but if you import the same mapping to multiple iFlows, and then if you want to change something, it doesn't mean that that the that the that the data type changes will be propagated. So in uh, under CPI, we don't have anything for for managing the data types. So I've been working for a lot of clients that have that have a very very extensive use of the global data types, right? So in this case, you really need to th rethink how do you work with that, right? Because if you have a very large number of the global data types, so you you have some sort of a uh, some sort of a unified uh, unified canonical uh, canonical data model, then you really need to give it some thought whether whether you you want to. How do you want to work with that on your on your SAP uh, on your SAP CPI, right? Because there will be no there will be no updates propagated to to all flows that are using this. Um, and sweet, anything add to, yep. to this point? Maybe I, I can add to that. Um, so uh, a couple of points to add to that is one is uh, that that there is a customer influence project that. Um, was open for submissions and all those. So this is actually one of the items 
requested a central repository. So, so we do, uh, we will see actually in the next few weeks or months, um, whether this, uh, the words of this is, uh, been high enough for SAP to take up, um, to introduce something like an PI, um, based ES, PI like ESR on that. Another aspect is because, um, iFlow in CPI is, um, quite, uh, free, free format, right? So you can design, um, any format. So one other approach is if you do have this kinetical model, you could also then s design your eye flows as separate eye flows. Then one actually do some sort of common, common, uh, uh, common mapping or common logic, and then you can split it to then route it to other eye flows that do specific ones. So uh, uh, that that's one approach that you can consider if you do come across this case. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So so the the next the next thing is the um, is the famous RFC lookups, right? If you're using any kind of um, any kind of lookups, whether this is uh, RFC lookups to just to to find some to do some volume mapping, maybe from BRF Plus on your backend system, or maybe from any of the customizing tables, or if you're using enhanced determination for for the same for the same purpose then of course it will not work right you need to redo those uh, you need to redo those those mappings and you need to create a, a, a standard a standard flow from that right so if you if you again if you're using the rfc lookups very heavily you need to take this into account into calculating the migration time because you, you just need to you just need to remove that it's yeah, uh, for the, and and it's the same thing for the for the enhanced determination. I know a lot of a lot of customers that are using the enhanced receiver determination very very heavily with the use of the of the of the mappings or Java mappings, but also they're doing the RFC calls within those within this uh, this enhanced determination. So this is also one point that you have to take into account when starting to uh, where, when doing the estimation for the project. Uh, anything for for that, Angsui? So, like so uh, again, we go back also to the free flow, um, I, uh, free format iFlow design. So there's no one to one uh, migration for this, but you then you can um, also implement such lookups uh, as request, reply, and all those. But but you have to redo everything again. So that's why uh, Miha was. Uh, saying so you you can do it in a different manner it's like a bpm type of approach to it mm -hmm. yeah so 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 basically that means that that again uh, again you have to redo some of the things um for the aba proxies it actually is a little bit more complicated especially when you move the whole uh, especially when you move the whole sappo to the cpi which is which is our case because the sap proxies if we don't have if we don't have SAPPO in our within our landscapes, that means that that means a few things. Uh, one of the things is that we cannot we cannot enhance the data types anymore, right? Just like uh, as we used to do in the ES, ESR, we don't have ESR uh, any any kind of concept like that on the on the CPI, so you cannot do that. So this is one thing. Um, if you just want to if you just want to communicate with the with the with the with the backends. Then of course it is possible. You can, uh, you can out of out of the. If we're talking about the outbound case, we can just uh, we can just create the uh, the SOAP web services from the ABA proxies, and we can do the communication. Uh, one of the, uh, I think one of the one of the most typical ways how how the customers are communicating with ABA proxies is that they that they create a, 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 an intermediate an intermediate iFlow. Who is receiving all sort of SAP, uh, all sort of SAP proxy messages, and then routing that to to different uh, to different iFlows, because the alternative is that you would need to uh, you would need to create a re sender receiver pairs for all of your uh, for all of your iFlows directly on the backend system, right? Because one back one 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 of those re sender receiver pairs would need to communicate with a single um with a single iflow so in 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 this in this case is it, it unfortunately it also complicates the communication a bit right so first of all the enhancing of those of those messages is no longer possible 
The second thing is that you need to you need to build, let's say, a proxy iFlow in order to be able to receive those messages in a similar way as we did, without, of course, um, having too much to do on the backend system. Right? Because, yeah, I, I mean, if you have if you if you have some people who are really knowledgeable on the backend system, then maybe you can still go go ahead with that. But if you want to have a more or less similar situation like we had with SAP PO, so just one flow, one channel, one one destination, then you have to build this this proxy um, this this proxy iFlow. Of course, this is uh, in 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 terms in case of different of different migrations. Whether, for example, when you just move part of your of your SAP PO to the CPI landscape, this this does not need to happen, right? Because you still you can still maybe use the uh, use the ESR to enhance the to enhance all of your all of your uh, data types, but at the same time use them for the use them for the on the CPI only. Right, so again, when you're thinking about about migrating your flows to the to the CPI, it's also good to think about this this topic. Right, how do we enhance the web services? Are we using a lot of web services? Uh, I mean, pro about proxies, right? Are we using a lot of those? So, how do we work around? How do we create any kind of workarounds for that? Of course, one of them would be uh, would would also be go back to to using IDOX <laughs> if they exist, right? But but it seems that that um, SAP has been telling us for for many many years that we need to we need to stop using IDOX that we should uh, we should start using enterprise services and and proxies, and yeah, I mean I I don't know about your experience. Please please also comment on that. But uh, but actually uh, actually this is uh, this. This 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 idea was abandoned by, by by most of the most of the experienced consultants. Right, everyone is still using IDOX whenever it's possible, and even the SAP is building new interfaces using IDOX. So that gives you at least at least some some thoughts about maybe maybe the the use of ABAP proxies. But if you use them, you have to do something about it, right? I think we would would you have any thoughts about that maybe? Yeah, I mean, the whole topic of about proxies is really interesting uh, because, I mean, we don't look at it from uh, just a technical perspective, but uh, when SAP first introduced about proxies, we, they look at it from an architectural perspective, ESOA and all these big names back then. And you have actually many companies that actually oh, uh, jump on the bandwagon. And, and at, at one point, I also was one that, hey, uh, when I went in and there's no, let's move everything to ABAP proxies because SAP says so and all. And then uh, now we are in the in the uh, <laughs> in the place where hey, what do we do with this SAP proxies anymore? And and then and the reality is also uh, what Miao said. This IDOC, I I call it like um, it's like the cockroach of uh, SAP interfaces. You know, <laughs> the cockroach survived through the dinosaur ages, and then like millions of years, they are still with us and. IDOCs are still with us. They are, they are, they are like, I mean, the standard IDOCs are mostly great. There are a few that doesn't work that well, but mostly works well. And then um, error handling is good and all those. So, so it is, it's hard to kill them also. This is one technology that SAP built and probably it outlived uh, what they thought it would, uh, it, its lifespan would be. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. I, I remember, I remember one of my one of my first stackets. I think, I think it was around two thousand six or something like this. So that was the SOA, uh, that was the SOA, SOA paradigm coming in, and, and and everyone was like, oh yeah. Then then we just move everything to to proxies, and I spoke with with one. I I, I will not will not mention the name, uh, but but there was someone a very very knowledge, knowledgeable guy from the from the SAP. And I approached him from the SAP PO area and, and I asked him, hey, okay, but so, so with this new SOA paradigm, so, so do you think that IDOX will still be there for, for, the, next, for the next three to four years? Because I, I got really scared at that time. And, and the guy told me, Mihao, 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 don't worry. IDOX, I promise you IDOX will still be there for the next decade. And, and, I, and, I, and I was like, you, he's crazy. He is crazy. IDOX will not be there for the next decade. So, <laughs> so I guess I guess in 2016, that was that was when the decade finished. 
So now we have 2020 and they're, they're still good to go, right? So, yeah, but so think, think, about, think about also moving the, moving the, the ABBA proxies. Uh, but but may, maybe if we if we jump to the to the IDOC handling directly, right? So with IDOC handling, so so just like we mentioned, still IDOC handling within the CPI is not yet perfect, right? We don't have we 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 cannot communicate over TRFC protocol. So the standard protocol for communic for for let's say sending IDOCs, we have to use the standard HTTP protocol. So that 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 causes that causes one one important uh, one important thing, especially in the in the IDOC uh, in the IDOC reprocessing. So sometimes it can happen that that the that the IDOC may end up with uh, may end up with uh, with uh, with status zero two. So that means it didn't reach the destination because of some of some issues with the uh, with the connectivity of some issues any sort of connectivity issues basically right. But, but the, the, the thing over here right now is that when we send it over HTTP from the backend system, let's say to CPI, and we have this status, we're actually never sure if the message reached the destination without checking the destination. So if we have status 02, we cannot automatically reprocess the IDOC, right? Just because there was a, there was a connectivity error, because we don't know if it reached the destination. With, uh, with TRFC, it, the, the situation was completely different. We would always find the IDOC in transaction SM58 if it didn't reach the destination. If it was not there, then definitely, then definitely it reached the destination. So just maybe a small thing, maybe this is a small thing, but since we're using a different protocol, I, at least I think it's a, it's a thing worth to mention. And the second thing is, is the support from, from, from IDOC um, acknowledgements, right? So you have to build the IDOC acknowledgement, uh, the, 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 the acknowledgements for IDOCs yourself within the flow, right? There is no, uh, there is no automated audit sending when the messages are received by PI or uh, by, by CPI or whether they're being processed by different steps of SAP CPI, just as we had in the, in the, in the PO. Um, Engsui, anything on that? Yeah, um, yeah, that's definitely correct uh, because um, the whole switch, I don't work really well with TRFC and all. So switching to HTTP, it can't be helped because um, uh, CPI is in the cloud now and the only way to get out is through HTTP. So, so uh, and like uh, we said, I mean, SAP is not uh, uh, regularly updating IDOC to uh, uh, the technology as a technology so so we we are stuck with um what we have um for idoc uh, using http so there are thoughts about it so um if you there, there, are, there are certain things that you can think about when you want to deal uh, with idoc is um if you want to retain the nature of uh, what you call um the eo uh, asynchronous eo type of handling then you in in cpi the moment the IDOC reaches CPI, you can uh, pump it into a JMS queue. So then, uh, then you're sure that, okay, uh, it reached the JMS queue, then it's persisted in the queue before then you process it further. Then, uh, and if there's any errors in the connectivity, then, uh, then um, the, it fails and then it will be automatically retried from the JMS queue as well. So, um, so, uh, uh, a different, uh, a different thing to think about. I mean, it's the same technology, but we are working on a different middleware. So, um, some thoughts of uh, redesigning your iFlow to then cater for some of this error handling aspect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then, then, uh, thank you, thank you, Engsui. So, so, so now let's go back to the uh, to the monitoring topic. So again, the monitoring as as uh, for for those of you who didn't work with the CPI yet, so the monitoring on the on the on the middleware on the on the CPI, on the SAP Cloud middleware, is actually one of the biggest uh, one of the biggest this uh, discussion points whenever anyone talks about the about the CPI, right? So so it's not as mature and advanced as we have with the with the with the PI. We do not have we do not have a lot of ways to do, for example, the content message based uh, based searching apart from maybe using the application ID. Um, the persistence of the message is, is completely different in the cloud, right? So 
for example, if you want to persist messages, you either need to create a persist step as uh, within within the within the iFlow, or we need to uh, or we need to turn on the uh, the persistence using the API. But actually, uh, but actually, this will store the message for a very very short period of time. So again, after one hour, you will not have uh, you will not be able to to find the payloads of the messages that you're using, for example, for testing, or maybe you're using that on the production. So it's a different concept, right? We, we generally, in general, we do not store messages on the, on the CPI, right? So this is a different paradigm of what we have in PO. In PO, we, we store messages. By default, we store all of the incoming, but we can easily store the messages outgoing, so after the mapping. In CPI, the, the, the idea is different. We, by default, we don't store anything. Right? If, you, if we want to store something, then we, have to, um, then we have to enable something else. So this is important from, from two points of view. The first one is the, is the monitoring, of course. So, so the, let's say the operations, how do you, how do you find messages? How do you, how do you work with the messages? But the second one is, is, is um, the testing, right? So if you want to do some sort of testing or if someone will be doing the testing for you, you if you want to reuse those messages you really need to be very quick right you because otherwise you will lose all of the payloads for testing so you will have to go back to your functional consultants or to someone else who can run the flow and ask him to rerun the flow right so it's in the in terms of the in terms of the if we compare it to po if if i have a usually on the development on, on the test systems the messages are being persistent for for a few months or or at least a few weeks so if someone tells me, okay, we did a test last week, I can easily go and find the test. With CPI, this is an out of the box. This is no longer, no longer possible. Um, yeah, Ingsui, anything to, to that? Yep, so, so definitely uh, the two parts that Michal mentioned is right. Uh, it has actually a big impact on operations because if uh, the operations team are used to um, uh, having access to logs and all those in, in PI is it, a paradigm shift, so to say, uh, that logs are not there by default. And uh, so I think it also then falls back to the enterprise architects or the integration architects to look at error handling um, from an architect pers uh, architecture and operations perspective, how uh, with the lack of this, do you want to uh, have a different approach or you want to then wait for SAP to then finally provide such thing? There are a lot of different, um, uh, there, there are some certain companies coming out with different uh, approach to that. Maybe they, they then uh, uh, lock, uh, have some script then that calls, uh, calls post some of these logs to another server or log because that there, there is some limitations of having the logs in in CPI but that also then introduces a lot of um, uh, technical um, technical content into the iFlow each iFlow needs to implement this rather than the iFlow just focusing on the application or the integration also so it, it there's a lot of thought um, in terms of design and architecture on this and of course, testing, we did also, I uh, mentioned the influence project um, earlier. So we also did put in a request for that. And uh, I think it got quite a bit of work. So hopefully SAP does implement um, the capability of having uh, the trace turned on for a longer period. Or uh, we, we actually requested for configurable trace. Maybe we can put it up to maybe a day or something so that it's available. Uh, so there are two aspects um, of this. So one is for the immediate development testing part where you, you are able to test, retest, but also the operations part um, when an error happened then where, where do you access things to, to troubleshoot what happened. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, so just to let you know, I think that, that today morning I saw the, the update of this request to under review from SAP. So, may, so SAP is now reviewing this, uh, reviewing this, this request. So, so this is yeah. this is a good thing from SAP, right? We can, uh, we can, we can send the requests, and SAP would would at least have a look at them. 
Um, yeah, I think I think we have two two questions from 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 Sergey. If I'm not mistaken, can you please clarify if it's possible to migrate CCBPM objects? So no, it's not. It, the short answer is no. It's not possible to to upgrade the CCBPM objects. You have to redo the complete flow in the CPI. And the second the second question: Are you still using CPI service in your in your to be landscape? Or may you combine with enterprise messaging ser uh, service or with some other services? And Sui, do you, do you want to up, up, uh, answer that? Um, we, we are purely using the, uh, the CPI, the process service as only. So uh, for the current, the migration project they are, we are doing, they are purely using PI, uh, PI, um, dual stack so so it's not that complex so we do we are able to mirror one to one to the cpi service only without using enterprise messaging or and even api management because there's no not much api uh, uh synchronous api involved mm -hmm. thank you um yeah so the, the final the final um let's say um lessons learned from the from the development perspective is of course the the lack of of some of the adapters and uh, and completely different idea of using the adapter modules right so let's start with the adapter so of course uh, of course cpi is is fairly limited currently on the on the on the adapters end if we're talking about communicating cloud to cloud applications everything should be fine more or less but if we talk about about more like an on-prem uh, on-prem uh, on-prem applications then yeah just just uh, i don't remember just a few a few months back probably we only got uh, we only got the the ftp adapter right which is one of the most common most commonly used adapters um yeah but 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 as as you probably know we don't have a lot of adapters on the cpi front and for the adapter modules it's it's even different right because the the adapter module logic needs to be completely rewritten Right, so so if you have um, so so this is of course if you if you have the the adapter modules then one of the one of the things you should uh, you should uh, be thanking uh, thanking God right now I think is if you're using NWDI to store the code of those adapter modules because if you if you don't <laughs> don't do that then then you have to find some other way of trying to find the code uh, the code for the adapter modules. Of course, of course, that exists, but 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 uh, yeah, it basically means you would need to decompile decompile the the the, the archives. Um, but the second thing is that you would need to redo those adapter modules, right? So so in case you have some custom adapter modules, then definitely you have to uh, you have to rewrite them in some way. Um, and Sui, you have any more comments yeah. to that? For me? Yeah. So so. Um... So the two parts adapters. Uh, so like uh, the position for CPI, uh, the strength is really on on the cloud. So uh, like uh, like Miha mentioned, so some of the uh, more traditional on-premise one, like uh, even JDBC, uh, is is on the roadmap, but it's not there yet. Uh, JMS. Um, they only have JMS for internal queues, so not for um, integrate. Uh, connecting to a, a, a external JMS server. So from an on-premise perspective, there are some gaps. So, so if you are planning, you want to move everything, then there is a challenge in that. If you're having a hybrid uh, landscape, then, then you're still okay with those remaining in PO and PI. Um, in terms of adapter modules, uh, you, uh, the, the standard ones, are uh, some of them have been now move to what we call uh, steps, uh, the, uh, the iFlow steps in, in the iFlow flow like uh, uh, JSON to XML conversion or CSV to XML conversion. So those are no longer modules because it's a different approach. So it's uh, steps, but um, uh, custom modules are, are not migrated uh, not no direct migration path and all. So, for example, I if some of you uh, might have used, I have um, the custom open source custom adapter module format conversion bin uh, that was I did for PI, and then you can just uh, e import the EAR file and use that. 
um, for CPI, there is no such way. So actually uh, last year or something like that, I migrated all across to CPI, but it is now uh, um, a different approach. You just build a jar file and then you call it from a script. So, so that's if you do have such type of custom adapter module in the landscape, then there is some work on that. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Engsui. So, so um, I see that there's a new question from Maxim. So maybe if we can, uh, please, please type in your questions and we will also try to, because I think the, the last 30 minutes we will just have for the Q&A session. So we will also try to, to answer all of those questions at that time. So just like just like I mentioned, the, the first part, the development perspective. So these are some of the things that you need to think about when you start doing the development, right? Or when you when actually before when you start thinking about the SAP PO migration from the development perspective. Fortunately or unfortunately, there is another perspective. There is the operations perspective, which from our which from our view and maybe from our from our experience can actually take even more time than the development itself. So what do we have, what do we have under, this, uh, under this operational perspective? So first of all, it's the, it's the connectivity, right? When we're, when we're moving from the SAP PO to SAP, from the on-prem SAP PO to the cloud, cloud application of the, of the SAP CPI, what we're actually doing is we're moving the middleware from one place to a completely different place, right? So that means that all of the communication in the communication channels, all of the usernames and passwords in the, in, in, in the, in the communication between those systems need to, be, uh, need to be done one more time. And uh, if, you, if you think about it, you, you, can, you can say, okay, yeah, but, but we have, let's say 200 channels, how long will it take, right? But from the from from what we get what we get from from Eng Sui Yeo, uh, and from and from the team that is doing the migration, this is actually not how it works, right? Because you have to take care of the of the time of the basis teams who can, for example, open the firewalls to your if you if you need to connect right now the cloud applications to the on-prem applications, then you need to engage the process of operating of of opening different firewalls, right? Of of opening ports of making sure that the communication will work between those two systems, right? So, so this, this is not just a strict, okay, I just replaced the URL. It would be great if it, if it would be like this, right? So if, we'd be, if we would be replacing one on-prem application to another on-prem application sitting on the same server, maybe it could work like this. But when you're moving something from the on-prem to the cloud application, this is a completely different ball game. This is a completely different story. You have to, so what Eng Sui is saying, okay, for, for the next run, we really have to plan this in advance because this is really, really time consuming, right? And, and there is a lot of people you need to get in touch with. So, so this is actually a full-time job for someone from the, from the project management office, right? Or, or some sort of a project manager because it just takes so much time, right? To, to open all of those connections. And then the second thing is, of course, you need to make sure that you know all of the users and passwords that were used in the SAP uh, PO landscape, right? So another another thing that depending on the on the let's say maturity of the of the first of all of the consultants who are doing the the integration and also on the basis team, you may find those users and passwords or you may not find those users and passwords <laughs> if you if you do not find the users and passwords, you just have to recreate them. But if you have to recreate them for, I don't know, maybe 20 FTP servers, 10 different applications, and maybe each of them has three, three layers of the, of the communication, then this becomes a project of its own, right? You, you, really need to, you really need to send a lot of emails. You really need to call a lot of people. So this will definitely take, take a, lot, a lot of your time. Eng Sui, do you have anything to add here? Yes, definitely. I think uh, on our side, we actually underestimated this effort. We thought, okay, uh, three weeks, uh, we're done. We can connect CPI with all systems and it took us actually double or triple <laughs> that, yeah. that time. Yeah. And so, and uh, if you're dealing with some, uh, you, you're asking uh, some external partners. So if you're within your internal organization, 
you might still be able to handle it fast. But you're, if you're dealing with external partners and then you're lining up their network engineers and all those, it is quite a challenge and all those. And then uh, one thing uh, uh, we also face is um, CPI is located in the SAP data center. And, and if you're in Cloud Foundry, some of the hyperscalers data center, and it's actually because it's on the cloud, there's no fixed IP. So um, they could, they probably today is a fixed IP, but it's not guaranteed that tomorrow or the next day, if they reboot the server, it might, uh, it might work. So uh, SAP provides a range, an IP range. And then when you go to the, go to the partner and say, Hey, can you open this IP range? And they say, this is too wide. We don't want to open this. So, so you have this challenging that's not really technical, but then is coordination negotiation. Hey, SAP says you have to open because that's what we own and all those. So you have this type of uh, issues at play that um, will, will stall it, um, not from a technical perspective, but actually uh, coordination and negotiation and getting everyone in the room. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so thank you, thank you, Sui. So this is actually, so this actually brings us back to the, uh, to the PO migration project, right? So if you're doing the, the migration project, you really have to plan this in advance, just like, just like that, like we always mentioned during a, a lot of our webinars, right? It's not just the development that you have to do. Development is just one of the steps, but coordination and, and the, the thing that I will be describing right now are two different, two separate topics that you also need to plan, even for those really, really strictly technical projects, right? Because PO to CPI migration sounds like a very technical project, right? We don't need anyone. We just need to move one thing to another, right? But, but then you have all of those, all of those communications that you have to do. Uh, then you have to do the testing that I'll be describing right now. And, and then the development seems, okay, actually the development was the easiest part once we found out that we can do everything, right? So don't, please think about this trap also in advance, right? And, and the, the, last, the last topic is actually, is actually the testing, right? So as we mentioned, the, uh, as we mentioned, the, um, the PO to, PI mig to, to CPI migration is a very, very technical project. Right, so everyone thinks about that. Okay, we're just replacing one middleware with another. So why would you want to do functional consultants? Why would you want to use business consultants for 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 testing that? And, but but when you start when you start thinking about that as a developer, for example, you can you can start wondering. Okay, but but then if I just move something, how do I test it? Do I take this message or maybe this message? Which of the messages will be representative? And basically what it, what it comes down to is that you always, you, as a developer, you always say, okay, but the functional consultants still need to do some testing, right? They need to test the variants that they, that they want to test. And here comes the challenge. If we involve a lot of functional, functional consultants and business users for a very small project, like a, C, like a PO to CPI migration, then this project will will start to become a huge balloon, right? Because, because you just have to use so many other people, so many other resources as with any other, let's say SAP implementation project, because they need to retest all of their interfaces. So we come into two, two, two traps, right? The, the budget of the project will be much, much larger if you do it like this. And the speed of the project will be much, 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 much slower, right? Instead of doing some alternatives. So again, so, so again, what is the alternative here? So what we, have, what, we, what we have right now is the situation that we have tons of messages on our SAP PO landscape that we can reuse the input and output messages. And we have a new tool, uh, the CPI. What if there would be a way that we can just move those, uh, fetch those tons of messages from SAP PO. And once you finish the development, run them through CPI and check whether the same target message, the same source message from the PO created the same target message on the CPI, right? What if, what if there would be a way? And of course, I will be, I will be showing, you, showing you how to do that with, the, with our tool, INT for IFTT, just to give you an idea how to remove those functional users, how to remove those business users almost completely. 
of course they will need to do some sort of uh, some sort of um, um, some sort of uh, connectivity testing just to see if the applications are working but the majority of the of the functional testing can be done automatically just because we have an SAP PO, we have this beautiful case that we have hundreds and thousands of messages, really good messages that we can reuse for testing. And for example, we have them on the production landscape, right? So what we can do is we can take the production messages from our PO system and just run them through the CPI test system or development system and check whether they produce exactly the same messages after you did the after you change the flow and did all of the uh, all of the development steps that we discussed in the in the previous slide um so before before we go into that let me just show you also one thing that we've um that we've created and it's a free um it's a free pi a pi migration calculator right so um, let me just change the sharing for a few seconds Yes. So what you can what you can find on our on our web page is a, is a calculator for SAP PO migration, and it works not only for SAP PI to PO migration, but can also be used for the PI to or PO to CPI migrations. So what what are the values that you can that you can that you can specify here, right? So this is the calculator that would show you how much time will it take to do the project, more or less, of course. It's a very very simplified um, simplified calculator, right? So at first, you need to specify the time to govern the existing SAP PO landscape. So this is exactly what Eng Sui mentioned about this pre-activities uh, pre that you need to do. So for example, checking all of the channels, uh, communicating with the, with the external, uh, external parties so that, they can open the, so that they can open different firewalls. Also checking the number of interfaces, channel information, right? So what you can what you can do here is you can specify okay let's say this will take 20 days for the whole landscape right then over here what you can do is you can specify the number of landscapes so how many test landscapes do you have if I, if i have a typical four tier landscape then that means that i need to uh, do the testing on three landscape and how much time will it take for me to to do the testing for for a single landscape Usually this is anything from three to four weeks, right? This is, this is the standard time that it takes for the, for the official testing. So let's put 20 days here, right? For each of, the, each of the landscapes. Then what we need to do is we need to specify the, the number of interfaces and their complexity, right? So number of complex interfaces, let's say that I have maybe 10 complex interfaces, um, 50 medium, medium interfaces and 100 simple interfaces. And now you can define how much time will it take, uh, will it take to, uh, to move this interface, right? So let's say that for the complex interface, it will take me one day. For the, for the medium interface, maybe it will just take, take me half of a day. And for the, for the simple interface, let's say that it, only takes, uh, that it only takes two hours to migrate it because it's, it's really simple, right? So over here, you, need to, you just need to specify uh, your email and then we can press on the calculation button. And what we will see is a very, very simplified uh, calculation. How much time will it take you to do this PO migration, right? So, okay, it's, it will take me around if I do it like this, it will take me around 140 days, meaning more or less 28 weeks if I'm working on the project alone, right? If I have more resources, then it will take half or, or maybe even less. But, but you, can also, you can also use this, this sort of calculator. Um, so if we go back to the... Mm, if we go back to the, to the testing, so what I would like to show you right now is how can you speed up the testing and basically um, increase the increase the security in the in the migration project at the same time by removing almost all of the functional consultant um, uh, testing from the from the project, right? So with if, if if we can if we can have a look at our tool uh, INT4 IFTT, what you can do what you can do with the tool the tool is a, is an ABAP uh, is an ABAP add-on. So what you can do basically with the tool, maybe just just one more, uh, one just one more slide to that. Um, uh, 
um, for for this for this particular case because our tool uh, our tool is an enterprise uh, enterprise SAP integration testing tool. So we're supporting multiple environments. We support the uh, we support the SAP PO, SAP CPI, also Dalbumi Dalbumi testing uh, from the for the transport layer testing and also the S4 HANA. Uh, so if you have an interface on the backend system, if you want to if you want to make sure that it still works for example after the s4 hana conversion you can still uh you can still use the uh, you can still use the 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 uh, the the existing messages and test the s4 hana conversion but if we go to this to this particular to this particular case what is it what is it that we're trying to do right so what we can do is we can if the interface runs Let's imagine that we have a lot of messages because the interface from external system to, to another external system is running through your SAP PO, SAP production, production system, right? For the, for the process orchestration. So once we rerun it, we can, what we can do in IFTT, we can store those two messages as a test case, right? We can store it as a test case. And in the next step, what we can do is we can rerun the, the test case which will create, which will resend exactly the same message to the middleware and will produce the current execution of the target message. And those two target messages, the reference one and the new one will be compared in IFTT. Right? So this is, this is the standard way of working that we can work with the, with the SAP middleware. So for example, SAP PO. If we think about the PO to CPI migration, it works exactly in the same way because what we can do is we can take the existing messages from SAP PO, from SAP PO system, and we can just tell IFTT, okay, now rerun them on the South, on the SAP cloud, uh, cloud platform integration on the CPI and check again whether the, uh, whether the current, uh, current source message created exactly the same target message as in case of the process orchestration. And, but let me show you. Uh, let me show you how does that work on the system because I think this is this is the best the best way to view it. Um, so if we go to the to the IFTT cockpit, what we can do is we can select the test folders from here. So what I want to show you is the PI to to CPI migration. So as I mentioned for a start, what we want to do is we want to fetch some of the messages from our SAP PO system. Right, we will be fetching the source and target of those messages so that we can reuse them for testing uh, for testing on the CPI. So what we need to do is we need to create a new test case. Um, let's uh, so so we have to put the the description um, of the test case, and we will just mention that this is the source uh, source of the uh, of the. Uh, so, so this is the, the source of the test case. Here we need to mention an interface type. So, so there's a lot of interface types, but in our case, we want to test the, uh, we want to check the message, take the message from SAP PO. And here we need to specify the automation object. Uh, again, a source automation object, which is basically the same as the, as the SAP PO interface. So what we can do right now is we need to fetch some of the messages from our PO landscape. And of course, as I mentioned before, what we would be doing in standard here, we would be taking the messages from the production landscape. So what IFTT will do right now, it will go to this landscape and fetch all of the messages for the defined period of time for a specific interface. All right, so let's do this. I see I have four messages. Let's select all of them and let me transfer them. So right now, if I save those messages, IFTT will fetch the source and target of those messages and store them, store them within, the, within the database. So as you can see, I've got four different messages. And what I can do is I can also check their payload. So the, the interface is very simple. It's just an IDOC to an XML message. So let's see the, the payload of those messages. So I can have a look at the input message which is the IDOC, a normal invoice IDOC, right? So I have the invoice IDOC here. And this IDOC is actually being mapped to a single output message, which is, uh, which is an XML message, right? So now what I did, I took the messages, I took four messages for my interface from, from SAP PO. It took me, I don't know, around 30 seconds to, to fetch those four messages. And what I can do right now 
is I can, I can create the test cases for my CPI system. And the, the, how the configuration works is that over here, I, I have a test case ID. So I need to create the test cases for the CPI system referring to those test cases. Right, so I just need to take, uh, to take those, those few values and I need to, um, so in my, in my Excel, I will quickly, uh, quickly uh, put in the key in the values for those. So if you just give me a few seconds. Okay, so I have the, I have the test cases ready. So I'm just pasting them. So over here, the difference is that I'm referring to a, to a different interface type, 12, which is a CPI, uh, CPI adapter. And in the, in the document number, I'm not specifying the documents from CPI, I'm specifying the documents from the PI test cases. So those, those four documents, right? And now I have to, I have to save it. And now what I can do is let's imagine that I finished moving, finished migrating my interface, right? So what I can do instead of testing those messages manually, I can take, for example, 100 of my messages from, for this interface from my PO system, and I can just rerun them on my CPI, right? So what I need to do right now, I just need to select those messages and execute them. And that means when I execute them, instead of going to PI for testing, they will go directly to the, to the CPI system, right? So I can show you the, the cloud monitoring for that so that you will see how they, how they fly for the, for the testing purposes. So currently I have nothing. If I, if I just execute them. So right now what IFTT will do, it will send the original IDOC. And once the IDOC gets processed on the CPI right now, we will try to fetch the output of the, of the message and compare the output of the CPI with the output of the PO system, right? And in this case, we see that all of the test cases have passed, right? So that means that the that the reference message, reference target message of the IDOC is actually exactly the same as the CPI message of the current execution. Okay? So if you're a developer, that means that you did some, some really good work, but uh, because everything is working, but what we also did, we can test it for multiple number um, of messages, right? We, we can test it for hundreds of messages. That means that that if we take, for example, all of the messages for one hour or maybe all of the messages for a few hours, that means that, uh, that means that we don't need to use the functional consultants that much because it's so easy for us to reuse the existing messages for doing the testing, right? So, so here, we have, uh, here we have those messages. We can have a look uh, how, how does the flow look like. The flow is pretty, pretty straightforward, but it's it's just just one mapping, but what I would like to to show you is how do we create the configuration for the CPI, right? For this automation object. So basically, what we need to specify specify in the configuration object is the the iFlow. So this is the iFlow name. The second thing that we need to specify is where do we fetch the payloads from, right? So as you can see, the the configuration specifies uh, where do we get the output payload and where do we get the input payload, and those activities are exactly are, are actually the activities that we can see in the uh, in the in our CPI system, right? So this is the call activity five, right? When I'm where I'm fetching my input payload, and yeah, and I can of course uh, have a look at the also at the payload. So this is the IDOC that I was testing. And here in the, in the end value, I have the end event where I'm checking my output payload, right? So I'm comparing, I'm comparing that to this value. And of course, IFTT is managing the, 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 the um, uh, storing of those messages within the, within the CPI, right? So IFTT is turning on the trace automatically in order to fetch those files. So you don't need to make any changes to the flow. You don't have to use the persistence step or anything like this. Right. 
but basically this is the idea behind this uh, behind the um, behind the pi to cpi migration right so we're, the, the tool is supporting the PI to PO migrations for, for a lot of customers. We're also supporting the tool from different non-SAP to SAP middleware migrations. But the natural, the, natural, um, uh, the natural direction was also to be able to support the PI to CPI migrations. And this is what we have. And as you can see, it's, it's, it's very easy to, to work with. You just have to specify a few things here. You just take the messages from your existing existing PI system from the production and you can run hundreds of messages for a single um, for a single interface on your on your um, on your CPI landscape once you do the once you do the migration. Um, Xui, would you have any any comments on that already or? Uh, yeah I mean it, it works great for our project I mean we we, we just get like the last months uh hundreds of messages and we just run through and then and then it's like oh 500 messages all green in maybe 20 minutes and yep they're good to go yeah yeah so this is this is one of those one of those operational aspects right so so we're, we're not not a lot of people are thinking about that in front right but if you have this this pi to cpi migration projects these are really small small technical projects right so you don't want to have all of a sudden tons of people just supporting you with that because then then only two things can happen right either your project will be extended and it will cost a lot lot more and it will involve a lot more people so that means the communication will be much more much more difficult where we don't actually need that because we have tons of tons of available test cases so actually this is the best case when we're thinking about the test driven development for those of you guys that that are not familiar with the test-driven development. So with test-driven development, what you do is you, at first you start with creating the test cases and only then you do the development. Those kind of migrations are perfect for test-driven development because you have tons of messages on your old middleware and you can just rerun them on the new middleware after you do the development, right? So perfect case for the test-driven development. So either that thing happens if you don't use any kind of test automation tools or your project will just not happen. So someone will say, yeah, okay, but, but if, you need, if we need developers, if we need so many functional consultants, if we need so many business users, this is a huge project. Currently, COVID times, um, COVID year, we, we don't have money for that. We don't have money for this migration, even though it could be much simplified. But if you, if you show me that this is a very, very difficult project. It needs to be retested because some of our maybe sales interfaces are working on that. Some of our EDI interfaces will be working on that. So we need to make sure that we really, really test it. We either use tons of functional consultants or we don't, or we don't start the project, right? So, so this, is the, um, this, is the, this is the bottom line, right? Of this, of this sort of, uh, of, of this sort of project. Um, yeah, so maybe let, let me try to, um, uh, if you have, if you guys have any questions also, please, please feel free to ask them and maybe let me try to have a look if we have any. Um, so could, could you please, so, so from Sergey, so could you please clarify if it's possible to migrate CCBPM objects? So, uh, no, it's not possible to migrate the objects automatically. You have to create a completely new flow, which will which will mimic the functionality of the ccbpm you have to create it from scratch there's no way to um to 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 do any sort of automated uh, automated migration did, did you had did you have the uh, some sort of bpm uh, bpm flows and three in your project also or no was it, was uh, we, it don't have, we don't have yeah quite yeah, straightforward yeah. no bpm yeah, yeah. So, so, so we, we've we've added this point, but actually we don't have uh, we didn't have experience with moving the the BPM flows because j just 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 for this project, right? Uh, because the in this case in this case those were non BPM non BPM flows. But if you yeah, would even have even if you migrate to NW BPM, also you have to redo from scratch. So yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So, so any, anyway, you have to you have to migrate the CCBPM. So, if you're talking about CCBPM specifically, so the ABAP BPMs, so whether you go to SAP PO seven point five or if you go to CPI, actually you're you're doomed. <laughs> you have to you have to migrate. You have to migrate it anyway, right? So, 
yeah, a good good point, I think. Um, yeah, guys, uh, would would you have any other questions for 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 the for the content? I answered one on uh, on the chat itself. Uh, there was a question from Maxim Pavlenko. It says in SAP PO, there's a configuration scenarios concept where same ICO can be used in different scenarios for different target system. How can this be done uh, in CPI? So um, in CPI, uh, because everything is an I flow in CPI, so so. Um, there's no concept of sender receiver channel as separate objects. So you model everything as an iFlow, but one thing good is you can connect them using process direct. So one approach you can use is to then build an iFlow that has all the common part. Uh, and then the, uh, the different parts for the def different separate target system, you do it as different iFlows and then you cook them up using process direct. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Engsui. I think, um, uh, what is the preferred landscape to install INT? Uh, so, 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 Sergey. So, we usually install install IFTT on the SAP Solution Manager, just because it's connected to all of the landscape. So, this is connected to the test landscape and to the production landscape. That gives you the opportunity because you can fetch the messages from one production system, and then you can run the test cases on the on any of the development sandboxes or test systems, right? So, so from the from the technical perspective, this is this is how it works. And if so I can also, that, that there's actually no, no no restriction because uh, IFTT is just an ABAP add-on. Uh, for our specific case, the 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 their system is actually located on SAP Hack environment, and they don't have solution managers, so we just installed in in their ECC development system. Yes, so, yes. which so is can, just an ABAP, ABAP system. On any yep. system, but, but the standard one is the solution manager. And, and guys, um, since, since you don't have any, uh, any other question, maybe, maybe I, I, I can, I can use, use this time. So, um, as we mentioned, we're also trying to do a lot of education about the SAP integration testing. So, so just recently, we've published uh, an SAP press book about the SAP API testing where we, the, the, the strategy and execution, where we actually describe the, the, the test case which we're talking about, right? We're describing SAP PO to CPI migrations from the from this strategy and execution, execution point of view. We're also describing over there PI to PO migrations and S4 HANA conversions with relation to testing of the integration. And we also have an open SAP training. So this is a free video open SAP training. Uh, Open SAP. For those of you that don't know, this is a massive online learning platform from from SAP, and you can even get a record of achievement from SAP for for uh, finishing the the training successfully. And it also talks about the about testing of your of your SAP landscapes. It's three hours in total. Uh, the first whole week, so the first whole hour in in in, the, in these terms, is just the theory of of doing the testing for the uh, for the SAP integration. Um, yeah, uh, yes, I think there's one more question. Uh, no, sorry. So, so no, I think I, all of them... I'm just clearing all of them up. Okay. Okay. So I think, I think we've, we've managed to, to go through all of the questions. Uh, so if you guys don't have, uh, don't have any more questions. So what we'd like to do, we'd like to thank you for the, for the opportunity to present on the, on the PI Mon. And, and if I can do a little bit of advertising right now, so we will also have another session, a, a part of the session for on PI Mon. Uh, on Friday, when we will be showing the how you can test the how you can automate the testing of the Neo to Cloud Foundry uh, Cloud Foundry migration, uh, which will happen this week on Friday, and also this week on Thursday, Ang um, uh, uh, Ang Sui and Vadim will have uh, will have a session about the Groovy and CPI uh, and CPI development. So this is also a topic that they covered in one of their in, in their recent in the recent book uh, from SAP Press, and this session will be happening also on uh, th this this week. So if you can attend, I would also highly advise to um, yeah to 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 take your time and and use this time to attend maybe those two sessions.
Yeah, and okay. also I think we also for the webinar we also have a lot of time for question and answers because I think we find that I mean a lot of people do have all hidden inside they want to ask so we have that so if you do have you can come and uh, ask us during that time. Exactly. Um, so Ilya, I, I hand over to you. Um... Yeah, uh, thank you so much uh, together. Michal and, and Xvi, uh, it was a pleasure to see the possibilities of uh, your automation tool and approach. Uh, thank you. Uh, it was very interesting for me. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much and hope to see you uh, this week also, at least one time. <laughs> Уважаемые коллеги, у нас сейчас перерыв 40 минут. Следующий доклад будет в 2 часа дня по Москве. Пока пауза. Пожалуйста, присоединяйтесь к нам позднее. Это будет доклад Андрея Олейникова «Архитектурные аспекты одного общего открытого описания обменов интеграционными сценариями». Достаточно интересно и злободневно, так что ждем вас. Ну а пока пауза. Thank you so much, guys, then. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Have See a ya. good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.